Foundations of Love How to Build and Sustain a Happy Relationship and Family Please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel if you like the content. Chapter 15 Handling Family Conflicts, Finding Common Ground Conflict happens. And that's okay. Let's face it, no matter how close your family is, conflict is inevitable. Whether it's a disagreement over curfews, chores, or who gets the last piece of cake, family conflicts are a normal part of life. The good news? Conflict doesn't have to tear your family apart. When handled well, it can actually bring you closer together by teaching important lessons about communication, compromise, and respect. The key to managing family conflicts is to approach them with patience, empathy, and a focus on finding common ground. It's not about winning the argument, it's about resolving the issue in a way that works for everyone. Step 1. Cool down before you speak. In the heat of the moment, it's easy to say things you don't mean or escalate the situation with a harsh tone. That's why the first step in resolving any conflict is to take a moment to cool down. If emotions are running high, step away for a few minutes to gather your thoughts before jumping into a discussion. Cooling down doesn't mean ignoring the problem. It means giving yourself and the other person time to calm down so you can approach the conversation rationally. This helps prevent the conflict from spiraling into a shouting match. Pro tip. If someone says I need a minute, respect their need for space. It's better to take a short break than to force a conversation when emotions are still raw. Life example. The sibling squabble. Your kids are arguing over who gets to use the tablet, and the shouting starts to escalate. Instead of jumping in immediately, you calmly say, let's take five minutes to cool off, and then we'll figure this out together. This brief pause gives everyone a chance to calm down, making it easier to resolve the conflict. Step 2. Listen to understand, not to argue. When it's time to address the conflict, start by truly listening to each other. This means giving everyone a chance to share their side without interrupting or jumping to conclusions. The goal is to understand where the other person is coming from, even if you don't agree with them. Active listening shows respect and helps the other person feel heard, which is essential for finding a resolution. Repeat back what you've heard to make sure you understand their perspective and ask clarifying questions if needed. Pro tip use phrases like, what I'm hearing is, or can you tell me more about how you're feeling? To show that you're engaged and open to understanding their point of view. Life example. The curfew conflict. Your teenager is upset because you've set a curfew that they feel is too early. Instead of immediately defending your decision, you say, I hear that you feel the curfew is unfair. Can you tell me why you think it should be later? By listening first, you create a space for open dialogue and mutual understanding. Step 3. Focus on the problem, not the person. When resolving conflicts, it's important to separate the problem from the person. Avoid blaming or attacking the other person, and instead focus on finding a solution to the issue at hand. Use I statements to express your feelings and concerns without making the other person feel attacked. For example, instead of saying you never listen to me, try, I feel frustrated when I don't feel heard during our conversations. This approach keeps the focus on the problem and encourages collaboration rather than defensiveness. Pro tip, avoid bringing up past conflicts or unrelated issues. Stick to the current problem to keep the conversation productive. Life example, the chore disagreement. Your partner forgets to take out the trash and you're frustrated. Instead of saying you're so lazy, you say, I feel stressed when chores pile up. Can we come up with a plan to divide them more evenly? By focusing on the issue, you set the stage for a constructive solution. Step 4. Brainstorm solutions together. Once everyone has had a chance to share their perspective, it's time to work together to find a solution. Encourage everyone involved to suggest ideas and be open to compromise. The goal is to find a resolution that feels fair and workable for everyone. If the conflict involves kids, involve them in the problem-solving process. This not only helps resolve the issue, but also teaches them valuable skills for handling conflicts in the future. Pro tip, use phrases like what can we do to solve this or how can we make this work for everyone to encourage collaboration and teamwork. Life example, the shared space issue. Your kids are arguing about how to share a playroom. After listening to both sides, you sit down together and brainstorm solutions. Maybe you decide on a schedule where each child gets solo time in the room or you create separate zones for their activities. By involving everyone in the solution, you make sure everyone feels heard and invested in the outcome.
Step 5. Agree on next steps. Once you've reached a resolution, agree on the next steps to put the solution into action. Be specific about what each person will do to uphold the agreement and check in periodically to make sure it's working. If the solution needs tweaking, be open to making adjustments. Having clear next steps ensures that the conflict is truly resolved and helps prevent the same issue from coming up again. Pro tip, write down the agreed upon solution if it's something that might need a reminder later. For example, you could post a schedule or list of rules in a common area. Life example, the homework battle. Your child has been procrastinating on homework, leading to last minute stress. After discussing the issue, you agree to set a homework time each evening with no distractions. You write it down on the family calendar as a reminder and check in weekly to see how it's going. The power of apologies and forgiveness. Sometimes conflicts can leave lingering hurt feelings, even after they're resolved. That's where apologies and forgiveness come in. A sincere apology shows that you value the relationship and are willing to take responsibility for your actions. On the flip side, offering forgiveness helps rebuild trust and move forward. Apologies don't have to be elaborate. A simple, I'm sorry for raising my voice earlier can go a long way. And if you're on the receiving end, remember that forgiveness isn't about excusing bad behavior. It's about letting go of resentment for your own peace of mind. Pro tip. Encourage a family culture where apologies and forgiveness are seen as strengths, not weaknesses. This helps everyone feel safe and supported during conflicts. Life example, the apology moment. During a family meeting, you realize you were too harsh during an earlier disagreement. You apologize, saying, I'm sorry for the way I spoke earlier. I was frustrated, but I shouldn't have raised my voice. This simple apology helps rebuild trust and sets a positive example for your kids. Conclusion. Finding common ground. Handling family conflicts isn't about avoiding disagreements altogether. It's about working through them in a way that strengthens your family bond. By cooling down, listening, focusing on solutions, and supporting each other through apologies and forgiveness, you can turn conflicts into opportunities for growth. Remember, every family has its share of disagreements, but it's how you handle them that makes all the difference. With patience, empathy, and teamwork, you'll be able to find common ground and come out stronger on the other side.